Welcome to Discovering Gray's Lake, a podcast dedicated to the stories and people that make our town truly unique. Join us as we sit down with local business owners, community leaders, and everyday residents to hear their tales of triumph, struggle, and everything in between. From the little-known historical gems to current events shaping our community, we'll cover it all in an engaging and informative way. I'm your host, David Wool, and together we'll discover the heart and soul of our town, one story at a time. Today's podcast is brought to you by the lovely folks at Keller Williams North Shore West at the Sink Mars Group. Motivated not by numbers, but by helping you feel at home in our community. Jody Sinkmars and her team are committed to serving Grays Lake and its neighbors with the utmost care. Call Jody today at 847-767-7358 or visit the Sinkmars Group online at sinkmarsgroup.com to get started on the path for the home you love right now. This podcast is also brought to you by the Cashmore Financial Group. Financial advice for everyday people. Turn your financial stress into financial success. Call us today, 847-231-6150. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Discovering Gray's Lake podcast. Um, okay, I'm with Nick Rush. Nick, how are you today, buddy? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's a pleasure, actually. I'm, uh, I, I didn't know where your shop was, so I, when I pulled in, um, I'm like, okay, fire station, alleyway. And then here you are. Yeah, we're a little bit of a hidden treasure. Some people uh, who've lived here their whole lives said they didn't know there were any places back here, but um, we call ourselves the Hidden Jam on Holly here. So right. And what is the name of the shop? The shop is Andy's Records. Okay. So let me tell you this. So I heard about I heard about the record shop from a bunch of people in town because there was a buzz about it. Because um, when did you actually open? We opened uh, April fifteenth. Oh wow. Yep. Okay. So tax day. Yep. Yep. No wonder I didn't know about it that day. Um, so. Um, when I, when I heard where you were, I'm like, I've lived in Grays Lake my whole life. I've never walked down cause it's not an alleyway. It's a, it's a road that comes back here. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, we're off the side of the building. So we are off the shared parking lot between our building and the fire department. Do you so. know what helped me find you? What's that? I was on your Instagram and you did a video like walking down the side. That's right. And my daughters drew arrows, uh, with sidewalk chalk all on the ground. So people <laughs> couldn't miss it. What is your Instagram? So people could follow right now. It's too. Andy's dot records. Andy's dot records. Yep. Okay, so I met Nick uh, for the first time. I was at the uh, Grays Lake Summer Days, uh, chilling out with my boy. Taste of Grays Lake. Taste yeah. of Grays Lake. Yep. Sorry, I, I don't know the difference. You think I should know by <laughs> Summer now, Days right? is here in town, I think. Right, yeah. in August sometime. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Sorry, Park District. Um, <laughs> so I walk up to you, and I'm like, hey, are you Andy? Yeah, and I get that all the time. Right. Yeah. Which immediately made me go, oh, cool, a record shop. And then after you explained to me. Andy. Andy's your father. Andy right? was my father, yep. And he passed away in late 2021, uh, and I inherited his record collection, and so we used that as the nucleus for the shop. Okay, so your dad didn't own a record shop? No, my dad owned a bridal shop, what? actually. Yeah. No kidding. Uh, my dad owned and ran a bridal shop in Minneapolis that my grandfather started and was there for more than 60 years. Wow. And it was called Rush's Bridal, right in downtown Minneapolis. Okay, so he, me and him have some connections through through that kind of stuff yeah okay so runs a bridal shop and then obviously a huge love of music huge fan of music didn't play music at all just a huge huge passionate fan of music um uh, i always called him an old hippie <laughs> big blues and jazz fan big classic rock fan and he and i just we really bonded over music over the years i got all my passion of music from him we saw a ton of great shows together and um, he once uh, he would go to Jazz Fest in New Orleans all the time. He went ten consecutive times. So we've wow. got some of his Jazz Fest posters up in the shop as well. Yeah. And so the whole that. place awesome. is kind of just a way to honor him and a way to honor the passion for music that he had and that he imparted onto me and my brothers as well. I've got uh, two brothers. He had three kids. Wow. Three Your brothers sons. older or younger than you? Both older. I'm the youngest. Right. Yep. So what do they think about the shop? They uh, they like it. My middle brother uh, designed our logo, which is based off of a picture of my dad. And my oldest brother uh, is actually always asking me to bring him records and send him records out in L.A. where he lives. So <laughs> I think they're happy about it. Yeah. What was the favorite music show you went to your father with? Oh, wow. Well, my dad took me to my very first concert, which was Black Crows. That was pretty special. 
Um, and then we saw Allman Brothers together uh, and Santana together, which are two of his all-time favorites. So that was kind of cool just to get to see a couple of his favorites with him. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that you know somebody's age by asking them, what's the first concert you went to? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It was Black Crows. Black Crows, free concert in Minneapolis. Uh and it was in the Chris Robinson, like, bearded, kind of sloppy, drunken, yelling at the audience days. It was, it was a unique, <laughs> unique experience for a 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be exposed to that must have been super fun. That's right. Yeah, it was a good time. And I'll never forget, my dad uh, took me straight from work, so he was wearing a suit. And um, a guy turned and asked him, um, hey, are you a narc? A narc. And my dad goes, no, and I'm 12. I, have n- I didn't know what that meant. Right. Um, and the guy goes, well, do you mind if I light a joint? <laughs> and my dad goes, well, I'm here with my 12-year-old kids, so yeah. Right. I-, I didn't understand what happened at all at the time. <laughs> Looking back, that story cracks me up, but uh, I had no idea what was going on at the time. But it was, welcome to rock and roll shows, kid, you know? Yeah, 12-year-old. <laughs> Hanging out with your dad in a suit, which yeah. is kind of funny for all the pictures I've seen of him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I don't know if that's uh, family-friendly enough for the show oh, yeah. or not. You can edit oh, yeah. if you need to. There's but... a lot of 12 years on, 12-year-olds <laughs> on here that, that, that understand. <laughs> um, okay, so you guys, did you grow up in Minneapolis? I did, yeah. A suburb of Minneapolis, uh, Minnetonka. Oh, yeah. I know where Minnetonka is at. Okay, so how do you get to Grays Lake, Illinois? Well, uh, long story short, I uh, left Minneapolis. I went to California, where I lived in the Bay Area and studied at college for a little while. What were you studying? Um, I was studying uh, animation and film production, um, and I didn't last long in college. Um, I dropped out, and I started a record label with uh, one of my best friends out there. And the first guy whose album we put out was here in Chicago, and uh, my partner who I was running the label with, he's a drummer, I was a bass player, and we ended up backing him as his band, and we ended up back here after a couple of years, uh, settling in as his band, and we relocated the label here into Chicago. And what's the record label? The record label was Grape Juice Records, and uh, we ran it all through our 20s, all through the early 2000s in Chicago. Wow. Why Grape Juice? Uh, You know, I'm not positive. It was just, we liked the sound of it, it was nostalgic, (laughs) it it. it had a good ring, and we were 19, We we went with what we liked. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so did you do that was obviously a big part of your life. So music starts from the beginning. Yeah, music starts from the very beginning. I started um, you know, like I said I grew up in a house uh, with a couple very passionate music fans, just always music playing in the house. I started playing music in kindergarten. I started doing violin in the Suzuki Strings program, which they used to have. Wow. Uh, I don't know if they still have that, but they would actually take you out of your classes in school and teach kids how to play string instruments um, and give their lessons to them there in class so you didn't, during the school day so you didn't have to do it outside of the school day. So Great I started concept. playing violin in kindergarten, um, transitioned into guitar um, sometime in elementary school, And then uh, started playing in rock bands and and recording music after that. And so music and music recording has just always been a part of my life. Uh, I'm sure your dad supported that a thousand percent. He did. And I think he really loved that, um, you know, music was sort of a big part of our relationship and a big part of what we bonded over over the years. Yeah. It's interesting that he did the uh, the bridal shop. I'm saying it is stuck on that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what he loved to do is go to the jazz that, festival. That was the family business, and but you know he got exposed to a lot of great music over the years. Uh, one of the best and coolest stories is that when my grandfather was running the shop, my uncle was friends with some guys who were managing uh, up and coming talented artists that people were really excited about, and they wanted my grandpa to invest money into his album. So they took my dad and my uncle and my grandpa to the studio to see this guy recording. And they see him recording, and he's playing every single instrument, plays er- played every instrument on the album. And my grandpa agreed to invest in the album. A couple of weeks later, they called him, and they asked him to double his investment, and he told him to F off. Wow. Um, well, that was Prince. And oh that was my God. Prince's first record. Um, so my grandpa d- did not invest in uh, Prince's first record. But the story continues that that Minneapolis management team took Prince out to L.A. with that album, and he ditched them for L.A.-based management basically as soon as he got there. So, I, you know, we, we try to tell ourselves at least that we wouldn't have been billionaires off of that one. Grandpa just would have probably gotten his investment back. Yeah, but... he probably would have relocated <laughs> and then 
they would have dished it out um, to somebody else. But then the cool sort of tail end of that story is that 40 years later, my dad and stepmom had a surprise wedding party. They went to the courthouse and they got married. They didn't tell anybody. They invited all their friends to a party at the jazz club that they frequented in Minneapolis. And I think their friends thought they were going to announce an engagement. And they said, surprise, we got married today. This is our wedding reception. So impromptu wedding reception. Nobody knew it. Nobody was planning it. That night at the jazz club, Prince and Maceo Parker show up and sit in with the band and play my dad's wedding reception 40 no years later. No shit. Not planned. No, you know, no... Um, no, uh, wow. nothing, nothing that was supposed to happen. Just a really wonderful coincidence for my dad. Yeah. Wow. So the investment was a good investment. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. What pretty a cool wild story. story. Yeah. That's... So, um, my grandpa and my dad had a lot of cool stories, you know, being in Minneapolis for so long and being, um, you know, a business that was right there in the downtown part of the city. Um, and so, Part of me just wanted to carry that tradition on of, of our family having a business where we live. Um, and that's sort of my hope with Andy's Records. I don't necessarily see it being a generational thing, nor, but you never know. Maybe my little girls will want to keep uh, the record shop open after I'm done. You never know. Yeah. You know, your your story is inspiring to me, especially when I see a man opens a record shop in, in downtown Grace Lake. And I look at it, and uh, my big thing, especially doing this podcast, because I've had my own businesses, you know, my entire life, is it it takes some balls and and to actually throw caution to the wind and start a record shop. I'm sure it's <laughs> probably family members or somebody that you're going to do what? This yeah. How you're going to support your family? For sure, for <laughs> sure. Well, luckily I've got a day job, so this is sort of my secondary income, which is nice. But um, you know, this sort of me, uh, hopefully a little bit of a move towards retirement for me as well. I do location sound recording for yeah. film and television for my day job, but that involves a lot of traveling, a lot of long physical hours, and frankly, at some point, I'm just going to be too old to do it. So, um, it you is. know, my hope is that with this, maybe I can start to get my foot out of the door of television production as well. Right, but, yeah. you, but you enjoy it. I do, I love it. It's great. I got into it because I wanted to get to travel for work and meet new people and do different stuff all the time. And I've done that. I've gotten some amazing life experiences and I love it, but I've got three little girls now and it's harder and harder to be on the road. And so, you know, that part of my life is sort of coming to a close a little bit. Right. Yeah. And I understand that, especially with the travel and stuff. Yeah. Fun. So, um, right before we started recording, um, Nick and I were having a cool conversation because we're, we're big baseball fans, both yeah. of us. Yeah. Um, and so, kind of, kind of retell the uh, story because he was trying to make me jealous. I think because he's, That's right. he's wearing a Twins hat, <laughs> and I'm a Cubs fan. Um, I did not wear any Cubs gear today, um, so he had to rub it in my face with with the story. I will say the Cubs are my National League team, though. I've watched the Cubs on WGN since I was a kid in Minnesota. They would, I would come home from school and. The Cubs games would be the only baseball on TV when he got home in the afternoon. And you could watch them up in Minnesota. So I watched a lot of Cubs games growing up. I'm glad you didn't say you were a White Sox fan. Then then we might not have been able to record record the podcast. Right. Thank (laughs) God uh, we agree on that. (laughs) But the story I was telling that uh, was making you jealous was just about my favorite gig of all time in 20 years of doing, uh, you know, location sound recording is that I was lucky enough to get to record audio for the 2016 World Series. And I was at on the field and in the clubhouse before and after every uh, home game for the Cubs World Series run uh, and at the World Series. And the part I didn't tell you that was really the best part is um, we were filming pre- and post-game coverage for MLB Tonight, so we didn't have to work during the game. We just got to go find a seat in the the auxiliary press seating or whatever. It was like a couple hours on the field before the game, and then by the seventh inning we would all line up to take the field when it ended, but we got to go watch the game. So that was the best part was just getting paid wow. to be at the World Series. Okay, and it almost, almost gave me chills when you were talking about recording in the, the locker room for the champagne celebration for the NLCS championship. That's right, yeah, and that was where my worlds of loving baseball and loving music really collided because I'm tapping my camera guy on the shoulder and I'm getting sprayed everywhere left and right with champagne and I'm going, look over there, look over there. And I've got my cell phone in my other hand just so that I can get it for myself too because over to the right, about 10 feet away from us, I see Eddie Vedder just giving John Lester a giant bear hug and picking him up and everybody spraying them with champagne. And I was a huge Pearl Jam fan growing (laughs) up. So I was just, you know, I'm getting chills talking about it right now. And you have the video. Yeah, and I've got the cell phone video somewhere. So (laughs) definitely one of my all-time greatest moments, you know. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool to see, especially when doing, you know, audio all around, like for 
TV shows and things like that that you probably get to see a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, and that's one of the fun things about getting into that line of work is, you know, just a lot of different experiences, you know. Not talking about, like, 12-hour days on interviews and you know, right. sitting there where you're bored out of your mind. Right, that's the logging. grind. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but not every job has its great stuff, too. That's it. right. It's a trade-off. And I also love, you know, um, the the irregular work schedule. We work those long hours and sometimes six, seven-day weeks, but then we get weeks where we're down and we're home and I get to be with my family and, and it's really nice. Right. Yeah. Um, so how was the transition from um, Minneapolis to in the first place you live in Illinois? Was it Christ Lake? No, it was Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. And, and I actually came to Chicago from California. That's right. Yeah. California, Chicago, yeah. and then to the Burbs. <laughs> yeah. And I actually didn't throw in Baltimore either. I was in Baltimore oh. for four years. So I was in California. I was in Baltimore for four years and then I was in Chicago. Um, I've been all over. Wow. But, so a little culture shock from Baltimore yeah, to Gray's Lake, too. But it's it's been an f- interesting transition. Um, we were in Chicago. I was in Chicago for about 10 years, and I loved it. I was in Logan Square and Humboldt Park and all around there, and I had a great time, and that's where I met my wife. And um, our story is very similar to many people's stories who I've met since I've opened the, opened the record shop, which is we got married, we got pregnant, we were looking for a place we could afford, and we ended up out in the suburbs. Um, my wife uh, grew up in Libertyville, okay. so we ended up in Vernon Hills in a townhouse. We were there for about seven years, um, and then when we were finally ready to uh, move into a single-family home, we were looking forever to try to find where we wanted to be, and we found Gray's Lake, and we ended up here. So. Um, I feel like a little bit of a poser being uh, on the podcast because we've only lived here for 18 months. <laughs> but uh, we love it. The community has been amazing. I mean, my kids love it. We love the town. We love being able to walk into downtown. We love being able to enjoy time on the lake. And it's just like we feel so at home here. We don't want to – we don't ever want to go anywhere. Awesome. Yeah. It, it is great. How were um, – and you had a – you had your booth up at the fireworks yeah. Um, how how was that received? That was awesome. A lot of people are doing double takes going, what the heck is that? A big booth full of crates of vinyl. But um, yeah, it was really cool. It was fun to be there. And it was just great to talk to people and spread the word. Because even though we've been open for two months now, we are, like I said, sort of hidden back here a little bit. And we're only open on weekends. So it's been a relatively limited number of days we've been open. And it was great just to talk with people in the community and let them know that we're here and, and tell them to come see us and tell them to dig out the boxes of vinyl they got sitting in their attic in their basement and bring them in and sell them to me because I want to see them and we want to uh, trade them in or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I I think it's fascinating, especially the record stuff, you know, from being a DJ. And I used to say that people carried their um, records around in milk crates. Yeah. And I always thought they were record crates. Yeah. Because I never carried (laughs) milk in anything, you know, that's so uh, it's, it's kind of funny to see that. And also that you have a shop selling old vinyl when... And you have CDs here. And yeah. I saw that you have tapes here. And eight tracks. Eight tracks. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's so cool. So to actually have a shop with something that not only a lot of people consider is like obsolete in the in vinyl, but, you know, we talked about how many people uh, listening to the show have hundreds of CDs laying around their house. That That's right. They don't use anymore. Everything's digital. Yeah. It's it's a it's an interesting concept. For yeah, a, and CDs are making a comeback now too. They um, are. Yeah, they are. Um, high school kids love CDs. They're they're affordable, and um, the manufacturers are manufacturing a bunch of new CDs, and they're remanufacturing the old stuff on CD again. Did not know that. I didn't know it till I started the record store <laughs> either. But um, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, somebody told me. Well, somebody told me vinyl just outsold CDs for the first time in in decades. Uh, uh, the other um, last year, I think. So cool. But yeah, so that's pretty cool. Vinyl's been on the comeback for quite a while and it's um yes. you know, it's definitely still not as big as it was pre C D era, obviously, with digital and all the other ways that you can consume it. But I think that if you want to collect, it's the way to go. It's you get your artworks nice and big, it gets a great sound, and it's it's the fun thing to collect and have on your shelf. I'd rather have that than boxes of CDs personally. Amen. And <laughs> And if somebody comes to your house and you have a big vinyl collection, A, great topic of conversation. For sure. You can pull out stuff and listen to stuff. It brings back, it's nostalgic. It is. And it gets you listening to whole albums or whole sides of albums oh again. Oh my God, which, I can't believe you just said Which that. is kind of a, become right. a thing of the past, you know, right. with, with with all the digital services. It's a playlist society and it's a, you know, single society. Um, and now at least you got to listen to a whole side or get up and change in the middle of a track, which is just kind of awkward with a record player. It's crazy. Okay, so I was at a baseball game and I was having a conversation with my buddy Mike Massey 
Um, and he says, you know what I did the other day? He's like, I got a CD out or something, and I listened to a whole album <laughs> in order. Yeah. Which is funny because I think kids like, you know, I have an 18-year-old son. He's never listened to an. He probably doesn't. He couldn't. Me and you could name track by track. Right. Like albums from growing up. Right. Right. And probably even now. But but it's a different kind. So I'm going to challenge everybody today. Yeah. <laughs> to listen to listen to a whole you know album. Yeah, listen to a whole album and find one that you know you love to listen to. Like what I do is think about one that anytime you feel like you could put it on and you'll enjoy listening to it from front to end and. Bam, that's one of your favorite albums, and put that one on and listen to it. Yeah, and just it's, enjoy it's a, it. It's an experience. It's like a journey. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which is kind of cool. Um, if you had to listen to one album cover to cover, what would it be? Lately, uh, my go-to is Fate by Dr. Dog, which is an indie rock album from the early 2000s. Wow. Uh, just a, one of my all-time favorites. And it's asking me that is like asking me to pick a favorite child. Um, right. but I yeah, child, so lately, <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> mine might listen, so I got to pretend I don't, <laughs> but, um, I have, uh, you know, lately been saying that one cause I just, that's one of my go-tos that I can just, I can listen to it anytime. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right. Speaking of records, first record or cassette, anything that you ever had, what was it? Uh, first cassettes I ever went to the record store and buy were singles. You remember those? It was totally just, you just got one song on each side of the cassette. <laughs> That's right. Um, and it was R.E.M. Stand yep. and Guns N' Roses' Sweet Child of Mine. I bought them at the same day and I went home and I listened to them just endlessly. And then my first CD was a gift at Christmas one year and my brother gave me Pearl Jam's 10 on CD. Wow. Yeah. Okay, you want to see the difference between you and I? Yeah, about. So being from Grand Lake my entire life, I got on my bike, I saved my money, I I rode my bike up to the drugstore, which is now Emil's, um, right where that's at, and somehow they had music there, so I had like a little Walkman thing. Awesome. Um, it just it wasn't even a Walkman; it had a speaker on it. Uh-huh. I don't think we used headphones at that time for, but I bought uh, I think it was ACDC's uh, Dirty Deeds. Oh, awesome. Um, and the first CD I ever owned was JJ Fad. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're out in our age difference a little bit here, but <laughs> I, I progressed a lot from there. <laughs> but it, but it's kind of funny that I think everybody ha- remembers that first piece of music. Yeah, and and I I had a similar experience. I remember riding my bike down to down in the valley, which is a record store that was in Wyzetta, Minnesota at the time, and still is actually. Well, I, I don't know if their Wyzetta location is open, but they're still thriving at their original location in Golden Valley, and. Uh, I used to ride my bike down there all the time. I bought my first records down there too, um, which I wish I could have gone and bought all those now because that was in the mid '90s and they were selling them for fifty cents to a dollar out in the front, uh, you know, in crates out front because they didn't want them in the shop. And they, they had first pressing, you know, Dark Side of the Moon and uh, you know stuff, all the classic rock stuff that you know you got to pay forty, fifty bucks for now. And I just wish I had just cleaned it all up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, one of the first DJ gigs I did, um, me and my buddy Greg, who I was talking about, that, that he does um, sound also, we were up in this old DJ booth, and they had crates and crates and crates of records and 45, 45s. They, and the lady was like, yeah, t- take every, take everything you want. So I wanted to get a jukebox at the time. But we walked home with, I don't, I don't even know where these things are, but just crates of 45s. Cause yeah. 40, collecting 45s when I was a kid was like, that was the thing, man. We yeah. went to the mall, or I think at that point we're going to Lakehurst, where up 120, which is Fountain Square now. But you would go and you just collect your 45s. Yeah. Which is the singles, just like, you know, just like the singles I was buying and the, you know, hits that people want to stream now it's just it's your way to get the the, the hit songs you know right. our playlist yeah. took a long time a lot longer right. than to go on our phones <laughs> right. and change them at that time you needed a stack and one of those players that could grab the oh ter- grab the records and bring them over for you such yeah. a visual anybody that's younger than <laughs> us have no idea what the frick we're talking about look it up on youtube it'll blow your mind <laughs> and then they say well why would i want to carry all these things around it, it doesn't sound like the music i have which that sounds better yeah yeah, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we've got uh, the 78s here, which were my dad's collection, and those are even older. And those were the original singles. Those had, uh, you know, a single song on each side. And those sound different on their own because they were on shellac, and they've got all that surface noise that you hear in those old blues recordings. And some people can't stand listening to that. Really? But 78 collectors, that's, you know, that's part of part of the sound. It's, you know, it's it's just sort of part of it. Wow. That's crazy. 
Okay, so we were talking about prices of stuff. So yeah. um, if someone is if someone is going to make a trip over here and they were looking to get you know uh, the 45 or 78 or um, what what do they expect to pay? I'm sure it depends on what it is. Right? It totally depends. I mean, um, I think you know expect to pay a, at least five bucks for a 45 or a 78, and then just it's going to go up depending on the title and the rarity and the quality that it's in. What's the most expensive record that you have here? Oh wow! I think the most expensive record I have here might be right now might be priced at two hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. And what is that? That's a Cannonball Elderly record with Miles Davis on it. Awesome. Yeah. So cool. And it's in pretty rough shape actually. The the ones of those that are in good shape go for a couple go for a couple thousand. So yeah. Wow. It's it's really interesting uh, the what's what's happening with records. But you know it's just just as with anything, the older it gets. The fewer of them there are to collect, the few of them there are that are in good shape, and therefore the more expensive they get because they're rare. Yeah, it's 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 kind of cool. So let's say I'm looking for um, whatever we'll just say Beatles White Album, and I come in here and I'm looking for it, and and you don't have it. Can you get your hands on things or special requests that people ask for? For sure, and I do that all the time. I order new records in every couple of weeks, so I can order, if you wanted a Beatles White Album reissue that was newly manufactured, I could order that in for you anytime. And then I can order, I can track down used stuff, and I have new used stuff cycling through the store every week as well, so there's constantly new stuff coming in. And I really enjoy uh, taking down people's names and numbers and their requests and trying to track it down for them, and I'll, I'll track it down for you, and I'll shoot you a text, and I'll let you know when it's in the shop. It's one of the things I like doing. It's yeah, fun. it's like a, like a treasure hunt. It's a little well. bit of a treasure hunt, and I like um, I like being able to find people music that they want and help people discover music that they want to hear. So if you want to track something down, I want Andy's Records to be a place where you know I can go there and they'll help me find it, even if they don't have it on the shelf. Yeah, then there's not a whole lot of record stores around. Yeah, yeah, there's not. Um, I think the closest one is is 20 minutes, maybe Antioch, in Antioch. Yeah, and I yeah. saw one in Wakanda too. Yeah, um, they have, but yep. I'm sure everybody has their different things that they, you know. Yeah, their and style. that's true. Each store generally tends to focus, you know, on on different types of genres and different sort of niches within record collecting. So because yeah, you got to make it fun for you, if you're yeah. going to be here, you got to carry stuff and, and search out the stuff that you want. For sure. Yeah. So is any of this stuff your personal collection? My personal collection is sitting behind you here in my office, safely locked away from the clutches of any customers who may come into the shop. <laughs> and your favorite one from all of these? Oh my, that would be so hard to choose. Uh, my favorite find is down on the back. It's a um, uh, one of my favorite bands. They're called La Save Fav. They're a post-punk band from Brooklyn. And the album is called Three Fifths. And... The packaging is made to look like a package of old shower caps. And the <laughs> inside the record is actually got a giant rubber shower cap that goes around the record as the, the dust sleeve inside the jacket. And so it's a, just kind of a wild piece of packaging. It was a hard find. It was a rare find. And it was just one, you know, I felt like uh, I had won a, I felt like I'd found a treasure, found the X on the treasure map when I found it in the store. Heck yeah. Yeah. I th- it makes me think about like record companies when you're putting out like you and I have a band and we're gonna put stuff out. Think about how the marketing has changed yeah. from having you know a cool piece of vinyl like oh, you never hear about that. Right. I mean, how do you do that? Yeah, and there's all types of cool stuff I'm you know people are doing these days now that vinyl is so much uh, so much more collectible again and and so mo- so popular again. Um, somebody brought in a record where the whole front is just white and there's a quarter in the dust jacket and it, the whole front is a scratcher like a lottery ticket and you have to scratch away to reveal the artwork um and it had been unscratched so we've got that one here in the shop which wow. is pretty cool and then tons and tons of colored vinyl and splattered colored vinyl and variations it's really really cool stuff being made these days yeah i would encourage parents just to bring their kids here even if they're not in the market for it just to show them some nostalgia and how like how we used to consume music. That's right. Yeah, I do a lot of uh, explaining to people what the 45 spacers are. We have a bowl of those up uh, by the register, and I get a lot of, what are these? Or a lot of parents asking their kids, hey, do you have any idea what this is? And then we explain it to them. So That's cool. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of, like, you know, education of uh, old old music media and old formats that goes on in here. 
Right. Yeah. Because I know my, my six-year-old would walk in here and he'd scratch his head and have no idea. Probably my my 15-year-old girl, too. She'd be yeah. like, Dad, what, what is that? And I love it. I love explaining to somebody, you know, I'm happy to explain to somebody what an 8-track is or how, uh, you know, how a amplifier works or, uh, you know, how to... How to turn a record player on and, and get the needle in the groove, like all of that stuff. It's fun. It's cool to educate uh, people and educate the kids on it. And I really love uh, watching the high school and middle school and youth in general come in here and discover old music. Yeah. Because that was something I loved doing and that I did through my dad and discovered his generations of mu- his generation's music. And it's just cool to see somebody come in here and pull out that Beatles White Album and buy it and go watch him walk away and go that kid's gonna go home and have his or her mind blown you know yeah <laughs> i mean i love getting to be a part of that and help be the purveyor in that a little right. bit and it makes me think also like your you and your dad and your um your relationship based upon some of this other music that he you know introduced to you and then you end up loving right um I, I'm going to make it a personal challenge myself to sit down maybe with my kids and listen to one of my favorite albums with them yeah and maybe they'll go, this is crap. For sure. <laughs> or like, wow, this is cool. We could talk about it. And Yeah, and what I do with my kids is I just play my music around the house all the time. And half the time they don't like it. But of course. they're going to eventually. Or at least it'll seep in and they'll they'll know it. They'll have heard it at least. And, and I think that's, for me, it's just like we're not going to listen to Kids Bop and Frozen all the time. Not all we the time. do plenty. Of Don't course. get me wrong. And the Alexa is a real curse in that because we listen to our Spotify through that, and my kids can go up and just tell her to turn my music off and turn theirs on whenever they want. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I let them listen to their stuff, but then I also make them listen to my stuff a little bit, and uh, hopefully they start to develop a little bit of an appreciation for it. That's funny. I used to listen to a lot of like you know '90s rap stuff, and I'll play it for my for my 18 year old. And he'll hear something and be like, no, Dad, this song is whatever. I'm like, no, this is where the sample came from. Like, you <laughs> have no idea that, right. that well, to, there's a lot of stuff that's not original. Yeah. Uh, uh, samples of, of all the good stuff is what I, I say. Yeah, I, and I love that. I love picking, because I'm a big uh, 90s and 2000s hip-hop fan as well. Yeah. And I love picking out some of the samples and then tracing them back. Uh, for example, one of my favorite new records that I got is uh, David Bromberg. Um, and there's a song on it called Sharon, which is where the Beastie Boys got the sample for Johnny Royale, nice. which is sort of how the first time I heard Sharon come on, uh, I went, wait, this is Johnny Royale. And I, and I had to go and dig a little and I was like, oh, obviously I was like, this must be where they got the sample. And now I'm in love with that song Sharon the and, and, and I've discovered David Bromberg through the Beastie Boys. Wow. You know, how it all comes around. <laughs> right? Yeah. How it all comes around. <laughs> Um, okay, so to to consume the vinyl stuff, that's people want to get into um, collecting vinyl. Yeah. Um, but they don't have their old record players. So I myself have purchased a couple of record players off of um, like Amazon um, stuff. If you were to give someone advice to where to get a record player at, to get a new one, to get an older one, what do you do? I would tell them to come right down here to Andy's Records and buy a new one from us. We sell uh, the new Audio Technicas. They're the reissues of the classic Audio Technica model. Um, so it's just like the old one, but they build the preamps in now. So it's got a switch on the back to send either a phono signal out or a line signal out, which basically means you can use an amplifier if you have one. But if you don't have one, you could send it right into a pair of modern powered speakers and not even use an amplifier. So we sell those and we sell the speakers um, and we also sell replacement styluses and cleaning kits and all that stuff right here in the shop. So I'd say, yeah, that's the easiest thing to do. You know, if you really want a piece of nostalgia and an old turntable, then... Just start looking around, but be prepared to, you know, do some belt replacement and have to go online to find a new stylus and all of that stuff. It's it's just not going to be as easy for you. Yeah. Right. So they can get some hands-on help here. Yeah, and exactly. Somebody knows what the heck they're talking exactly, about. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I do have a a guy I sometimes send people to who can do who does repairs on things if you have a piece of old equipment that you're trying to get fixed up. Nice. Yeah. No, that's awesome. What would your dad think about um, walking through the door here? Man, I think he would love it. Um, you know, first off, he would see all of his posters on the walls, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he would see a lot of his favorite records on the shelves. Um, and I think he would just love, you know, a that I I'm carrying on sort of the entrepreneur entrepreneurial uh, sort of spirit of the family a little bit, 
And just that, you know, I'm finding a way to take his nice shared passion of music and, and share it with people and, and share it uh, in our community. See, that's awesome. Yeah. And you're bringing something to the community that um, we haven't had. And that's really been the most amazing thing um, since even before we opened our doors, just since I sort of created an Instagram account and, and let the world know a little bit that we were going to be opening up the shop, the, the response from the town and the community has been incredible. I mean, everybody is so supportive. Everybody seems super excited and happy to have us, and we're just thrilled to be here, and it's just – it's been great, and um, – it's, we feel so lucky to be a part of this community. Yeah, people are excited yeah. about it, man. They they really are. It's like one of those um, one of those things you look at and go, okay, not only do you have support from the community, but the local businesses are like, hey, have you met Nick? Yeah, and like, we've been trying to, to you know, we've been trying to do things with other local businesses as much as we can. But yeah, I mean, it's just been so so, so awesome and such an honor, and I just hope we can uh, live up to everybody's expectations. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I saw on Instagram too. You did something with the beer bazaar. We did, yeah, we did. Um, we I spun records over there at the launch party for the craft beer festival where they sell the tickets ahead of time. Yes. Um, and so they asked me to come over and spin records, which was fun. And I brought my little portable setup and a nice. little crate of records and, and played some records that night. Yeah, that it was, was, it was so a good time. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and those guys are pretty cool over there. I really yeah. like them. I got to get them on the podcast. Yeah, and way. we did a pop up at Light the Lamp. Okay. Um, and we've also done a pop up over at uh, Black Lung Brewery in, in Round Lake. So. I'm um, noticing these things are centered around alcohol. Yes. Okay. You know, drink, I don't need you to explain yourself. I'm dr- just saying. <laughs> drinking and rock and roll and records, they go they go together. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there's always pizza involved too. It seems like. Yeah, I see a reoccurring <laughs> theme. That's good. Yeah. Um, we're gonna pause one second. We're going to do what we call the Grace Lake hot seat. Um, so I'm gonna rattle off about 20 questions for you. You're gonna answer as fast as you can. Oh boy. Um, yep. And you, you you don't have to answer them if you don't want to. You can pass on them. Um, okay. But, but this portion of our show is brought to you by our good friends at the Barbecue Productions um, in Third Lake, and they have some other lo- other fantastic locations as well. But obviously, I'm here to promote local business. So I know it's Third Lake, but he can like throw a rock, and he's in Grace Lake. So <laughs> shut up if you have a problem with it. But you want great barbecue? Go see Chris at Barbecue Close Productions. Close enough. Yeah. Exactly. Um, all right, um, Nick. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start our our timer here that I just pushed that's definitely not fake in an air gesture. Um, okay, uh, name the last celebrity you met. Oh my gosh, I am very much blanking. Name a celebrity you've met. William Shatner. Boom. Uh, your favorite book. Oh, wow. Um, Gun with Occasional Music. All right, what do you put on your pizza? Pepperoni. All right, do you prefer truth or dare? Usually truth. Are you an Apple or Android guy? Apple. Uh, good. That's why we still text. Um, your guilty pleasure. Oh boy. Um, I don't know. Right. Um, <laughs> um, does your car have a nickname? This one doesn't. The one tattooed on my arm was oh. called Lucille. All right. Apparently that car has some special value <laughs> too. That's right. Um, what is your biggest fear? Oh boy. Um, I get very claustrophobic. Okay. How often do you shave? Never. Look, I trim my beard. At his beard. <laughs> <laughs> um, how many times do you exercise per week? I try to run three times a week, but I rarely do. Nice. Do you have a go-to karaoke song? Bust a Move by Young MC. Oh, yeah. I love it. Um, pool or ocean? Pool. Um, last show that you binge-watched? Uh, well, we are working our way through season two of The Bear right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love me some Italian beef. Um, highest score in bowling? Oh, probably not great. Probably a 150-ish around there would be my guess. Okay. I already know the answer to this, but your favorite sports team? That's the Twins. That's right, yep. baby. Um, your biggest pet peeve? Oh, wow. Huh. I don't know. I seem to get uh, annoyed by the dishwasher not being organized the way I like it to be organized. <laughs> Your wife's probably laughing. She's listening. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Probably. Or else I'm going to get in trouble for that. <laughs> right. Um, the last thing you purchased on Amazon. Oh, gosh. Um, I think it was some mini Lego figures. Oh. I can't tell that you have <laughs> um, Or maybe they're for you. I don't know. Um, and my favorite, or my, my second favorite one is, how many days can you wear a pair of jeans without washing them? I prefer not to answer that question. Okay. All right. And lastly, <laughs> tell me about the second time you got arrested. I have never been arrested. Wow. 
miraculously. See, you either don't answer it or it's your <laughs> answer right now. <laughs> and, and the jeans one I didn't answer because I only own two pairs of jeans, so that kind of should answer it I in itself. I have two pairs of jeans, too. <laughs> either I don't wear them or if it's wintertime, then we need to figure out a schedule. You can probably exactly. switch back and forth. And That's sort of what I do. I, I wash one and wear the other one for several weeks and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks for dealing with that. Yeah, that's um, fun. Um, all right. So if you've if you've not been to the record shop, I want to encourage people just to come by, say hi. Even if you're not in the market for records, you'll probably end up they'll end up walking out with something. Yeah, or you know, if nothing else, come check it out because it's it's a fun space and you'll probably find something that sparks your interest. Yeah. All right. So I know that in any business that you run, people probably walk in and they have the same questions for you all the time. So what is the biggest question people ask you? What are your hours? All right. And do you buy records? Okay. Yeah. So the answers are? The answers are our hours are vague. <laughs> they're, 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 they're usually Friday. They're, we're always open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's usually one to six. Oh, yeah. um, and, and then it's by appointment. Um, and so during the week, I'm usually here on Mondays or Tuesdays doing buying appointments. And so I'm happy. I have the doors open. Uh, but basically the answer is really follow us on social media or call our voicemail. We update our hours every week there so you can see what they are for the week. Okay. So they can find you on Instagram at andes.records. Correct. And Facebook as well. Okay. Same name. Yep. Okay. And, uh, you can give us a call at 224-252-2167. And I try to update the voicemail with our weekly hours every week on there as well. That's awesome. Yep. Okay, so do you buy records? We do. We buy and trade in for records. So I mentioned I do appointments on Mondays and Tuesdays. So, again, give me a call, reach out on social, bring it in and drop it off on the weekend while I'm open, and I'll get, I'll look through them and I'll get back to you and I'll let you know, you know, what I can and can't take. Okay, yeah. so I'm sitting at home and I'm cleaning out my basement, and I run over all this giant box of CDs. And I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I'll take them down to take them down to Nick, and they'll buy these. Yeah. What, what, can I bring my CDs in here? You can bring your CDs in here, but I am very unlikely to buy them, unfortunately. If you want to give them to me, I'll take them. Don't throw them away. Same thing with you know old 78s or anything else. Don't throw stuff away. Bring it in here and let me you know let me see if I can make an offer on it. But um, CDs, unfortunately, I just don't have a lot of space for them and people give them to me a lot of the time so i just don't and they buy take them. up a lot of space they too. do yeah wow yeah well that's one man's garbage is another man's treasure too that's right i mean i also i also make house calls if you've got a oh. basement with you know boxes and boxes of records that you're trying to get rid of you don't know what to do and you don't want to lug them all out of the basement give me a ring i'll come over and check them out i bet you can find a lot of cool stuff at like estate sales and things like that you can. I generally don't play that game because there are, usually for every region, there are a handful of guys who are at every estate sale hours before it opens to be in line to be the first person to go in there and pick through the vinyl. It's it's surprisingly competitive. Really? And it's just not worth the stress and the hassle for me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. If it was cool and you actually yeah. bumped into stuff. That, yeah, cool. it's fun going to check out vinyl at estate sales, but if you're not the first person there, it's probably been picked over already, generally speaking. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So I'm hoping that today would inspire people to start building their vinyl collection. Yeah, me too. Um, come down, buy a record player. Yeah. Um, get it started, share it with your kids or kids. You can be the cool kid on the block when you have your record player and your vinyl. That's right. And we've got gift certificates for the vinyl lover in your life. See? Yeah. You've just thought of it. <laughs> it was kind of funny. I was at Target and I saw that there's vinyl for sale and I was like, really? Oh, yeah. Like major retailers are carrying new. And Target does exclusive Target vinyl, too. Yeah. Or it'll be, you know, it'll be pressed on a red vinyl or something and it'll be a, a limited edition that you can only get at Target. Isn't that crazy? It's wild. Wow. Yeah. I'd love to see it coming back. Yeah, it's great. Awesome. Well, Nick, thank you so much for your time. Anything else that we've neglected to mention? No, I think we have talked about just about everything. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, my God. I appreciate you, brother. And I will be back to buy some stuff, or I'll probably leave with something today. Awesome. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you so much for listening to Discovering Grace. Like, do me a favor. Wherever you're listening on, whether you're on Spotify, whether you're on Apple, whether whatever, Amazon Music, however you're doing it, make sure to subscribe. That way you'll get notes on uh, when new episodes are released make sure to follow us on all of our socials blah 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 hit the like button and comment and stuff and share this with your friends especially if you have a friend that loves vinyl make sure to go ahead and share the show with them have them hear about it um because this uh your shop here is kind of treasure like your vinyl thank you so much yeah share it and uh come come say hi all right thank you everybody thanks a lot <laughs>